Welcome back. So in the last episode, we were looking at uh, creating a project uh, in pair and uh, developing uh, that application. In this episode, we're going to look at actually putting a small application together based on an application in our documentation called uh, Making a Pair Desktop Application. Uh, we're going to put that together using Pair Dev. And then we're going to uh, stage the, the contents of our application into a peer-to-peer -peer data structure. This is all managed for you by Pair Runtime. And then we're going to seed that data, and then we're going to run uh, an application from a, a key. The key represents the application. The key represents that peer-to-peer uh, -peer storage in which the application uh, is held. So let's, uh, let's get on with it. We've got a MyApp folder, which in the previous episode we created. And it's been updated slightly. So if we open up prepared earlier, we have uh, an index.html file, which corresponds to uh, the HTML file that uh, you can find in making a pair desktop application in our documentation. Uh, and we have within this a script tag that points to app.js. So let's just uh, let's just run this app with pair dev for a second to get a feel of what it's actually doing. So we can see we've got a create button and a, a join button with an input that says chat room topic. So what this what this application does is it allows uh, multiple instances of the application running on your machine or on other machines to uh, create a connection to each other completely peer-to-peer -peer, uh, and have uh, ephemeral chat that none of the chat is saved. We're not, we don't have any uh, persistence set up here. This is just uh, connections between peers and the, the ability to communicate using those connections. So let's take a quick look at AppJS to see what's going on here. We've got uh, a Hyperswarm dependency that we've installed, Hypercore Crypto, which is just for uh, conversion of public keys, and B4A, which is for uh, dealing with buffers. The Hyperswarm part is the, is the part we really want to focus on here. We can see we've got this uh, Swarm uh, object instance that uh, is returned from the Hyperswarm uh, constructor that's exported from the Hyperswarm module. And that object instance is listening for a connection event and an update event. So when a connection comes in, uh, it's represented by a peer object. And that, that peer object, the remote public key from it, is used to uh, identify the peer. We're not, we're not worrying about uh, aliases or anything like that, names of peers or anything like that at the minute. The update event uh, uh, is just whenever there's a change in the uh, amount of peers that are connected to this current peer. And we can use that to uh, track how many peers there are in the chat. Uh, beyond that, it's essentially a case of uh, joining and exiting the swarm. Now, the entire application, uh, JavaScript code, is 70, 73 lines of code, including comments, including white space. Um, that's incredible for, uh, for the functionality that it delivers. So let's take a look at the functionality. We have an app already open with Pear Dev, uh, and we can use two uh, instances of the app by running Pear Dev twice. So now we have two, and we can we can play around with the the the, the peer to peer interaction locally. The, the Hyperswarm is still going to be connecting through the distributed hash table, which is what Hyperswarm does. So you still need to be online for this to work, but you can uh, test out the peer-to-peer -peer functionality locally before you're ready to uh, go live. So in one application, I'm gonna click Create, and that's gonna create a chat room uh, 
using Hyperswarm and uh, some visual elements. Uh, now that's uh, been created and at the top it gives us a topic. We can use this topic to join uh, the chat room from the other application instance. And that's loading. It's connecting through the DHT and now it's connected. So we have two applications and both of them say they have one peer. That's because each of them are connected to each other as peers, one to one. One application instance we can say, hey, hey, hey. And in the other we can reply, yo, yo, yo. And you can see the two uh, apps are talking to each other. This is all well and good, but at the minute, there's no way to uh, really give this to someone else easily, right? Um, you could say, okay, well, uh, I'm gonna put this uh, uh, onto a repository and you can like clone that repository and then you can run pair dev, but that's, that's just for development. We need this to be consumed by users and people who aren't necessarily uh, you know, using the, the deep technical stuff. So to do that, we can uh, stage the application as we've been talking about, and then expose the application by seeding it to the, to the network and then allow uh, peers from anywhere in the world to connect uh, to our chat application, to run the chat application and then connect to each other. So let's, uh, let's see how we do that. We're gonna close these uh, development apps. And we're gonna take a quick look at the help for pair stage. If you wanna get deeper help on anything in pair, you just run pair help and then the name of that command. Pair help stage. When we stage, we stage to a channel um, or we specify a channel name or uh, would be maybe a better way to put it. The channel and the name of the package together, in this case, the name is my app, are taken together and they form essentially the uh, local ID, if you like, for generating uh, a key, for deriving a key from, for that application. So <clears throat> all we need to do to get our app staged to the local storage, peer-to-peer uh, -peer local storage, is a pair stage and we give it a name. So we, typically uh, if we're staging to uh, a production application, we would say pair stage production. Uh, if we're using something that's for like internal testing, then we tend to do pair stage dev, but the channel name can be anything you want. So I'm going to do pair stage dev. As you can see, this outputs a diff of uh, the files that have been added and removed or modified. Um, at the minute, it's all files that are added. And at the end there, there was a warm up step where the application is analyzed for its critical path and then metadata, metadata is taken so that that application can be loaded uh, faster. This gives us a uh, key at the end here it uh, starts YUQ7. So that's the key that now represents this particular uh, app channel for this particular application. So we can say, uh, well, the next thing we need to do, sorry, is that we need to uh, expose this uh, so that others can, can run it. And we do that with seed. So let's take a look at pair help seed. Again, you can uh, use the channel name within a project to uh, specify what key you'd like to seed, or you can just provide the key yourself. We're gonna use the channel name, so I can write pair seed dev. So the first command was pair stage dev, and now we run pair seed dev. This command is one that should be left open uh, Unlike uh, stage, stage is a, a command that starts and then completes. Uh, pair seed is a, a service that runs to uh, allow others to connect to it. Um, now that that's seeded, we can check again locally that we can connect to that seeded key using 
per run. So if we do pair help run, pair run needs a key because the channel name is, is something for that's on your local machine that's relative to your uh, development process. Whereas anyone in the world who wants to run your application, they're going to need the key because that's the only piece of information that the that will can be used to look up the application. So we can do pair run, and then we can take our key, including the pair protocol. It doesn't matter one way or the other. You can use it with or without. And then we run that, and our application has been now loaded over uh, again over the over the DHT. Um, when we had two applications talking to each other with pair dev, they were talking via the DHT, but they weren't loaded over the distributed hash table, aka HyperSwarm. This time, because we've done pair run, we've loaded the application itself peer to peer. So it's all very well uh, being able to uh, test this locally on our own machine, but it's it's really great if you can test it with a friend. So what I've got is a Keet chat open with uh, Matthias, and I'm going to send Matthias the key for the app in Keet, and then I'm going to create a chat room inside the app that we're running locally. And then I'm going to send Matthias the topic. So now uh, Matthias can run uh, the same application from that key and he can take that topic, put it into the application and join the chat. And we can see now that there is uh, a peer that's joined and we can see that Matthias has written, hi David. And now we have two separate laptops talking to each other. The laptops can be anywhere in the world. No infrastructure was used, no deployments were used. You simply stage, seed and run. Hey, hey, thanks for watching. Pair Runtime Development moves fast. So come chat with us on Keet and share your feedback. There's an invite in the description and on pairs.com. Remember, the future is peer-to-peer -peer and the future is now.